Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a video I really did not want to film. And not because I don't want to film, but it's basically if you saw the title, uh, first problem with the X5. anything guys I'm gonna keep it real and tell you basically what's going on with my car so with that being said um, the problem with the BMW connected drive services and depending on the year of your car you probably have it you probably have newer versions of it and what this connected drive is is Basically, that's how I get my real-time traffic information. You know, some cars are able to get it through X and Talent Radio, um, and then through that subscription. And but BMW does it; they want you to pay it through them to then get real-time traffic information. Along with that, you get your remote services, which is you can control your unlock and lock from your phone. I can vent the car when I need it, which is helpful for me during hot days when this car is outside. And a couple other little quirky things like you can flash the lights and honk the horn I guess if you lost your car or something um, but for me the remote services stopped working and then the real time traffic stopped working and then eventually everything else was dropped off and now I have nothing left I have nothing and I've tried to do this whole thing where you go into the update and you know I try updating it and it does this update it does a transferring data I've got on the phone multiple calls with BMW you know, Connected Services. I tried to speak to their genius. I was basically no help. And the last resort, they said, you gotta take it to a service center. So, also with that too, so I'm going to the service center, something else popped up. Uh, this happened just last weekend. I was pulled into my garage, and normally my uh, automatic part distance control activates when I approach, usually, usually when it detects me, getting close to like the garage uh, wall well it did that but when it did that it actually uh, popped up a um, error at that same time which said camera malfunction or camera camera what it was but it said something about basically the parking maneuver malfunction uh, was and it threw a code now the system still worked as it should but every time I reached out the car it would go away but as soon as I either hit the park, the PDC, or it activates automatically when it detects an object, it always triggers that code, which is to me is annoying. I can't stand anything like that. So I'm gonna have a look at that as well. Um, I was thinking about resetting the code and Beamer Link to see, but I figured since I'm already going for this, this service, I can try to basically to see if I can kind of, if they can at least tell me what it is, if there needs to be anything cleared, if anything said something to like alignment or something like that. So I don't know if I should even try with them. I'll just see if it is. If it's like a lot of money, I'll see if I can clear it myself and just go from there. Uh, I'm not going to have this car sitting for like a week or so and then spending tons of money while they try to figure out what's going on. You know, if they can just tell me, at least give me an idea, we can go, we can go forward, but I don't want them guessing and throwing, you know, parts of the car. So that's it. And see here. Transfer completed, still no assist, still no real-time traffic. It's very annoying. So I'll keep you guys updated. And uh, when I get back to the dealership, I'll let you know what they say. All right, guys. I am here at b and Concord. Not sure if you can hear me. Uh, just dropped off the X5. And uh, they said basically what's going to happen is they're going to diagnose it. There's a two hundred dollar charge. Uh, I would have got a loaner car, but they didn't have any. And you know, normally, you know, I've always for Acura, Audi, Mercedes. Usually, when you reserve your appointment online, you have the option to pick a uh, loaner car. And you know, I didn't see the option. All it was just a lift and. But basically they said that they had to take that option off because people were underage and were somehow reserving loaner cars and it was just causing 
issue so you have to call in and actually get the owner car so next time i'll know i probably got a car but it's okay um lexi's out today so she'll be picking me up um so we'll see you guys i'll keep you guys updated on the x5 um i had them just look at the being able to connect uh just skip over the actual um camera system because it's still functioning properly i may just go in there and clear the code instead of having them pretty much i, I mean I, I don't know i feel like that that's what it is it just seems like i don't know i, I don't i don't you know it, they said it would be another diagnostic fee for that too so i bet you i was in it four hundred dollars to look at my car so let you know I'm gonna walk around and I don't know, look at some BMWs. Very nice, I like the color of this. Oh, it's not, it's not an M, it's an S, S Drive 30i. Looks really good though. I like the spec on this one. I really like the spec on this one. Here, orange sapphire black carbon fiber top it's got the uh carbon fiber spoiler m performance exhaust it's a competition package the m4 is a sleek car i guess the reason why i like the m3 is just because of the uh back here it's this section right there I wish they did something with that and make it a little more aggressive. It's M3. So it's got the 18-inch uh, uh, 513 wheels. Went $48,000 for this one. It's, kind of... it's like it's missing a couple of different things. The executive package, I think. This right here is convertible hard top. It's nice. 26. I'm looking at some X5s. I think that's what I look at. I like this X5 right here. It's a nice one. Black grill and the uh, active uh, grill shutters. M Sport package on this one. I like someone left the mask in here. Which model is this? A, it's a 40i. Oh, you yeah. have the better looking brake calipers in the front, too. What size are these rear tires? 315, same 21s. This 21 inch looks better. So check this one out. Donington Gray. It's a Donington Gray uh, X5M. I switched to my phone because my GoPro died. I didn't charge the batteries. You know, I prefer the Magella Red on this. But I wouldn't mind having an X5M. What do you guys think? Trade up? Then you see the newer style X5s over there. Ooh, this one snuck up on me. You don't see this X5M. So this one has night vision on this one. You know what I like about the X5Ms is the full leather stitching you get. I mean, you can get these with the regular X5s, but the fact that I think every X5M I've seen just had the full leather, the Alcantara headliner, it just looks really nice. Of course, these seats, the Ball Serena seats, looks amazing. Interesting. There's no park switch, just like my M3. So I'm assuming maybe. Park mode is enabled by just turning it off. Night vision. If 
like to prefer the 21 inch over the 20s. I like this Sim Sport. This is newer. Next generation X5. Oh man, it just looks. I have to admit, they look nice. I'd like to drive one to see what they drive like. Uh, I knew my, no, Nancy has driven one before. We're, I was trying to get her to get one of these. She test drove one, didn't like it, felt it was too large. So I think she stayed with the car. Two and two competition. It looks like it's already sold. Very nice. Well, there's only four in this. No kids. I think this will be a really close option because you're getting the M3 engine with that. This one has, I believe. The massaging seats, not sure. What model is this one? It's another 40i. 75,000. Black exhaust tips, too. I like this. I could be here all day just looking at cars, opening them up, just looking aside. It seems they don't have any 50 i down here. What are your thoughts on the new 2 Series? What is this? Uh, this is a coupe. I mean, it's not a coupe anymore. It's four doors. I mean, it looks like a little less room than slightly smaller than the Civic. But this gray actually caught my attention. You know, I've seen these cars in a row. It's just, I don't know. I've never seen one like with this, this spec. This build. You have, you have the panoramic sunroof up here. Can't see much interior, it's all wrapped up, but I don't know. So it's no kids or anything, and it's a good car. These are some more X5s. My battery's going dead, so I may run out of room, so I'm not going to film every X5 here, even if I like to. It's 45E. So it's the plug-in hybrid. And right there is where you plug it in. It's got a support package, everything else there. It's near 5,000. I think the benefit of this one is you're getting better fuel mileage. It's not really just power, but supposedly the uh, electric kind of makes up for it. You're, you're a 40E also. Huh. You're a 40E. This better car, check it, next to look at. It was an X3, the M40i. I was really hoping that she liked this. <laughs> I mean, I'm actually I'm biased, but I was really hoping that she liked the M40i. She did not. She didn't like, she has short legs. She's like, oh, I don't know her height exactly, but she's short. And the thigh extender was, Cutting it to her leg, and you know, I don't know. She didn't like it. And the test drive experience was lots of traffic, so she didn't get a chance to really see what the wheel was all about as far as performance either. So, good seller that, that expect. Another 45E. I'm gonna put the eyes out here. How many people are buying it? Okay, that's my car tour is over. Here comes Lexi now, here to pick me up. Guess I'm driving. Okay, 
Hey guys, welcome back. Here at BMW Concord. So my car is ready. I just got a lift ride to get back here. Since I live 40 miles away, it was pretty pricey. I mean, uh, it was about 40, I'm oh, sorry, $60. Obviously plus tip because I got did a good drive, you know, good in traffic. Um, so 60 bucks to ride back here. But um, anyway, they said here, I'll probably go into more in depth in the car. Uh, the spec for a connected drive not working. Connect to a battery charger, ran a fault check. They said no faults were connected, were detected with it. Um, they did a TCB and head unit service update. Um, and found the online services still not operating. So they did a software update basically and it seems to be functioning properly according to them so once i bring the car around i'll go over it my total cost was 430 dollars um I, I don't have warranty this was just the diagnosis i mean this is a software updates if i have warranty hopefully the diagnosis will be covered um if they ordered parts then i would add it more to that um so four hundred dollars four hundred thirty dollars down first problem with the x5 hopefully it resolved it i'll let you guys know once we get inside the car all right so i have the car got into it same things it says i don't have a contract okay i tried again to add the car back it says it's sending a car confirmation code I waited like 30 minutes. The code never came through. We'll Went back in the BMW inside again. Tell them about it. Say, look, it's not working. Can you, you know, something's got to be wrong. I tried calling BMW and they tell me now there's not in the car with the contract. And I said, I have the car here. I mean, it's my car. I, re I, tried, I tried to delete it and re-add it, you know, a while ago. And they're saying, well, because of that, we need to now reconfirm that you are the owner. I'm like, I am no, I mean... So I'm like, how do you do that? And they say, well, either BMW dealership or you can mail in documents and you know, we have to confirm it from there. So I'm just been a headache and I went back inside to see if the BMW dealer in here can confirm it. They tell me all they have their geniuses. They're doing new car deliveries right now and they're, they're tied up. And here I am back on hold again, 30 minutes. This is frustrating. I, I mean, this is a BMW. I dropped, I feel like this is a premium brand and I'm feeling like I feel like I'm just in, in like, and I would say Kia, but I feel like I mean Kia did this because Kia is like trying to be like premium also. So that's like they, they stepped their, their game up also. I just don't get it. I don't get it. You know, I've, I've owned Lexus. I've owned Mercedes. And this is, I'm in my third BMW now. And I'll tell you what, Mercedes has it down. No matter what, no matter how old your car is. They, they just treat you so well and I don't know I'm, I'm just frustrated I'm in a hold I'm gonna go back in there again talk to them not a good experience hey guys welcome back it's uh Sunday it is July 26 all right so I'm gonna give you a follow-up what happened I mean obviously Friday I was in a different state of mind I was very aggravated very frustrated I just had to put the camera down and just try to deal with it. Um, just focus on getting this car fixed as opposed to, you know, vlogging this, this experience. But I still want to fill you guys in what happened because, I mean, that there are some things that that took place. So first thing, I was on hold with Connected Services because, like I said, BMW Service Center was saying there was an account associated with my car. I know I do it because I, I even tried to show, I have the app, it shows both cars there, the M3, it shows the X5. I do have an account. During the whole diagnostic process, the car dropped off from the services, you know, it got accidentally deleted and it shows that it's trying to add it back. But unfortunately, when you add a car back onto connected services, it's trying to send a confirmation code to the car that you get to your iDrive. Well, it's not pulling that, it's not receiving that code. You know, it's, it's like having your cell phone and it's like it's in airplane mode. It's like for some reason it's not, it's not even on. 
Um, so I wasn't getting I wasn't getting any signal back. It wasn't it wasn't sending. There was a confirmation code, so I couldn't add the cart back, which is what prompted me going to the service center in the first place. I said I can't add this car in here. I can't you know I don't have what started was I don't have the real time traffic, which I explained. But I felt like that day I was just kind of like pushed off. It was like they didn't try to help me. They didn't. I I proved that I have an account. I even gave my login information, my password, say before I left the dealership. So they could have logged in and connected drive themselves and say the two cars were on the account, which has a subscription. Uh, I renewed my subscription back in June for real time traffic and everything else. But they they just kind of felt, I felt like I was pushed out the door. Like, hey, we, we did our part. We shipped the computers. Everything's good to go. Uh, you need to create a new account. And I was like, no, that's not, that's not at all what the issue is. The issue is. Something's wrong. The car's not receiving the signal. So I went back in there uh, twice, and then I ended up getting a uh, place in the call with Connected Drive. Um, when I did that call with Connected Drive, they put me on hold for like 30 minutes, and I finally became frustrated. I said, you know what? Let me place a test call with the emergency button, because that will right, that at least right there tell me that it's working. So I placed a test call, and of course they came on, you know, and said like, you know, is there an you know, emergency, you know, blah, blah, blah. I said, no, I said, I'm just doing a test call. And they said, well, there's no account with this car. So I explained to him that there isn't. He's like, say, well, sir, this is not an emergency. And he tried to scold me for using the SOS button for a non-emergency purpose. I said, look, I said, on your website, on your frequent last questions, it says specifically that I can use to, to do a place of test call. And that's what I'm doing right now. Now, if there's an issue with my account, then you should call me my cell phone. We can work this out. You know, and I did this before. When I first had my problem with this. I ended up placing a test call to verify, and the agent was very helpful. She said, "You know what? I can't do much here because they'll, they'll lock the iDrive. But let me call you back on your phone. And we can get this all figured out." Now, this agent at first was giving me a little pushback, but eventually he helped me out. He uh, he was able to link my account. He found my account, linked it through, got the car back on there again. Got told me it was it was for some reason it wasn't showing up. So I went back to the service department. Now they're about to close, but again, in the course of geniuses, they're still doing a new car delivery. So, you know, I couldn't get any help. They just kind of said that there's nothing else to do. And and I just left there very happy. And I was like, okay, maybe they're right. Maybe the computer's working. Let me drive home and see the updates and I'll get like my services back. So like I said, I had a 40 mile drive home, hit the update vehicle assist, nothing. I double check, make sure my check boxes or my iDrive were good to go for real, receiving real-time traffic. I even tried to see if I could do a concierge or a roadside assistance. Nothing came through. And I said, I was just feeling very frustrated. And then I was driving the car. I felt like it was down on power. It could have been just placebo, but I felt like it wasn't kicking down. I feel like when I passed car, if I passed a car, I felt like it just, I had to like push the pedal down a lot. And I'm thinking, you know, this is 50i. It shouldn't be feeling sluggish. But I felt very sluggish. I didn't, I didn't like it. Uh, that made me another video. So I might do a draggy test to confirm that. But um, Saturday morning, I decided to place a um, call back to the service center. I ended up talking directly to the service manager. I explained to him my frustration, explained to him everything. And I, you know, like I said, I'm talking to him. I talked to him just like I'm talking to you right now. I just told him this is what was going on. I didn't yell and scream at him. Um, even though I was really frustrated, but I just kind of explained what, what was going on and he was very apologetic. He seemed like he really wants to make this right for me. So we'll see how it goes. I'll keep you guys posted right now. He's tried to basically, he said that what, what he'll do, he said, he, he felt bad because I had to drive back down to the dealership again, but he wants to do is get their, um, dealership side to connect this drive on the phone and get, I'll get the customer side on, on the phone and somehow we'll relink this car back to this to connect the drive he's thinking that somehow it came unsynced he's saying that he's sorry that i was the car was delivered to me not you know you know unsatisfactory so we're going to work it out together we're gonna sit there together on the phone and if the car was misdiagnosed uh then i'll be issued a refund and we can move forward from there that being said i'm not i'm not saying like i saying this is this is a horrible car and like that i would want it was just I took the car to dealership, which I was advised by Connect and Drive. They told me to take the car there. And I'm thinking I just need to an update. And they did the update, did some software update. So at this point, I'm thinking it is a bad 
TCU, which is their, their telematics communication unit, which controls, it's like the box that controls the connected drive, the remote services, everything else. We figured this out. I said, it's not my best experience, but at least he's doing the right thing. He's trying to work it out me, make me happy. Like I said, if I paid this money, I want the car to work properly. You know, then that's, that's what I paid him for. If, if, they, if I did diagnosis and they said, okay, we're gonna, play, we're gonna place this, this module or this computer or whatever it was, and it was gonna be like 800 bucks. I, I was like, okay, cool. We, we did diagnosis, we figured out the problem and we will move forward fixing it. But like I said, I don't wanna pay for something and then get, receive my car back and feel like nothing. Cause then I feel like I'm ripped off. When I feel ripped off, I don't feel like I got the best experience. And anyway, uh, I'll keep you guys posted. Um, go forward from there. Obviously, I lost my coding. I tried to roll the windows up, um, and they didn't want to move. So now my mirrors don't fold. The windows don't roll up anymore. So we'll see. I have to recode it. Probably have to back it up. I don't know. We got to think about doing that. They did a software update. Can I just restore my backup, or would that screw everything up? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. All right, guys. Let's. Uh, thanks for watching. We just fixed.